Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection from First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo on Tuesday, March 7th. Yes, we're doing it on Tuesday because I'm going to be out of town and uh, just want to take the opportunity to do some daily lectionary reading. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And uh, we're looking forward to this time, I think. It's just, it's a, it's a different day, so we're going to get some different psalms and we'll, um, we'll see what God has for us. So let me open us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, the many blessings that you have provided. We thank you, Lord, that you are so good to us, uh, even though we are not always um, responding well uh, to your love. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to work in our lives, that we would be uh, increasingly confident and secure in your love for us, that we would respond uh, to that love uh, with love of our own and obedience to your word. So we thank you for your word to us today. Uh, may it be a blessing uh, to everyone who is listening and certainly a blessing to Natalie and me as we uh, seek to regularly submit ourselves uh, to your will and to your ways. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Starting this morning with Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him, and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord, and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from all. He keeps all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. In Psalm 146, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, and whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Our prophetic word today comes from Jeremiah, uh, verses from chapter 2. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem, thus says the Lord. I remember the devotion of your youth, your love as a bride, how you followed me in the wilderness, in a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who ate of it were held guilty. Disaster came upon them, says the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel, thus says the Lord. 
What wrong did your ancestors find in me that they went far from me and went after worthless things and became worthless themselves? They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in the land of deserts and pits, in the land of drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives? I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruit and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests did not say, Where is the Lord? Those who handle the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. Therefore, once more I accuse you, says the Lord, and I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coasts of Cyprus and look, send to Gadar and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, even though they are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked, be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold no water. Why do you complain against me? You have all rebelled against me, says the Lord. In vain I have struck down your children. They accepted no correction. Your own sword devoured your prophets like a ravening lion. And you, O generation, behold the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness to Israel or a land of thick darkness? Why then do my people say, We are free, we will come to you no more? Can a girl forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. From the New Testament, Romans chapter 1, verses 16 through 25. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith, as it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and wickedness of those who by their wicked wickedness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his eternal power and divine nature, invisible though they are, have been understood and seen through the things he has made. So they are without excuse. For though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their senseless minds were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling a mortal human being, or birds, or four-footed animals, or reptiles. Therefore, God gave them up in the lust of their heart to impurity, to the degrading of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Our gospel text today comes from John chapter 4, starting in verse 43 and going through 54. When the two days were over, Jesus went from that place to Galilee. For Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in the prophet's own country. When he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival, for they too had gone to the festival. Then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. 
The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he began to recover. And they said to him, Yesterday at one in the afternoon the fever left him. The father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he himself believed, along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. Back to our psalm, Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who are they that fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They will abide in prosperity, and their children shall possess the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and bring me out of my distress. Consider my affliction and my trouble, and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes, and with what violent hatred they hate me. O oh, guard my life, and deliver me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O oh God, out of all its troubles. And our last psalm today is Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow, such good texts today. I, you know, I, know, right. I know I say that. They're all good texts right. every time, right? They all are. Um, wow, where do you want to start today? Um, well, kind of... I'm, Go ahead. I'm what do you flipping think? to the John passage. You're, okay, let's let's start I'm with John to then. The John okay, passage, what do you, but it's really in the context of the other two, and just kind of the um, the contrast. You have this man who comes up, and he's asking Jesus to heal his son. Right. And um, I've got to look and see where the verses are and where it was. But and, and he said, you know, um, the. 
he, you know, he says, please come down my, before my little boy dies. He says, go, your son will live. And the man believed the word that Jesus spoke and started mm-hmm. on his way. And so you have this man who um, obviously he knows who Jesus is because Jesus has performed things before. So he knows who he is and he has this faith. But when you look at the Jeremiah passage and the Romans passage and in Jeremiah, you know, it's the rhetorical questions, you know, where why did you do this? Did I not do this? Did I not provide this? Did I not? Did I not? And this this evidence of, of God's presence and evidence of God's favor and of God's calling is all around them, and yet they rejected it every mm. single turn. And then you have this man who says, please heal my son. Right. And, um, and Jesus even says something about that in there, about unless you see signs and wonders, you'll not believe. Mm. But yet he questions again, and when Jesus speaks, he does believe. And so it just it kind of a contrast to these people that just rejected on so many levels. And even Romans, it's kind of the same thing. It's speaking to the same thing. Um, but you have this man who in faith, I mean, he, Jesus spoke your son as well. And he mm. was like, and he goes and he says, he's fine. It's just, just hearing those words. Um, I just, I found that the interest you know why why do we believe sometimes and then why do we not is it we right. believe I, I don't know is it desperation i mean if you're worried that your son is dying i mean that's pretty desperate and that contrast so, between belief and unbelief yeah where how much of that is from coming from within our own hearts or how much of that is maybe related to something else is that's I think so, that's a, that's an ongoing troubling question, is it not? Right. I think, right. right. So, so I don't know if that's where you wanted to start. Well, that's I, what stuck out to me. Well, I think so. Read, I think that's where I wanted to start. Also, you know, thinking about um, obviously John four. It's it's early in in the ministry of Jesus, but we see that it's referencing the miracle of Cana, where he mm-hmm. turned the water into wine. Uh, it's also referencing uh, what he did in Jerusalem, and and that would be in John two, where he's flipping uh, money uh, money changers tables over and all these kind of things. Um, this follows John 3, Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus, um, all of the things about uh, how, how in my sermon on Sunday talked about all of the references to the covenant from the Old Testament and how Jesus is fulfilling, reminding people of their stories, reminding them of Exodus, reminding them of Numbers, reminding them even of Genesis and the call of, right. of uh, Israel being God's son and all of these things, that the whole purpose of God throughout all of history was to call all of the nations to himself um, that all of the empires of the world would be crushed and, and God would establish a, a kingdom of eternal righteousness. Um, but also immediately previous to our text is Jesus and the, and the Samaritan woman. Um, and uh, I, was, I was wondering in verse 43 of John when it talks about when the two days were over because he spent two days with the Samaritans um, and many believed, and so it's interesting. Well, when the two days were over, he went from that place back to Galilee. And I was wondering, well, so that'd be the third day, right? Well, what happens on the third day? It's like, well, he comes out of the tomb, right? He right. comes out of a dead place, and how did the people view Samaria? You know, ooh, those people right. are dead right. in their sins, but here is Jesus providing new life to Samaritans, but even people in his hometown um, don't... Uh, don't honor the prophet in their own country, um, and so I think that the I think the I think John was intentionally trying to put that in there that there's a right. contrast between the people who should know better, um, and then the people who receive God's gift, uh, I guess in a way unexpectedly. Right. right. They didn't have all of those things that we read about in Jeremiah. You know, right. just how. Uh, those rhetorical questions that you referenced, like when when has this ever been done before? When have people changed their gods, even though the gods they worship aren't even gods? Right. But the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is the God who works in people's lives. Right. Accomplishes good things for them, brings them out of slavery, um, brings new life to them, and then they still reject him. Right. Hmm. And that would naturally take us to Romans, would it not? Where, right. where, uh, where Paul is making a uh, making a very clear argument that 
everything that needs to be known about God is available to all of humanity. The, the good work that God has done is, um, is understood because by mere creation. Right. And the yet. Evidence. It, it, the evidence. All we have to do is look around. Look the around. evidence is right there. We can't see God. He is invisible. But the evidence the, yeah, is all around. Everything. Um, but rather than giving God the honor due by just, by mere fact of creation, absent, absent any other right. interaction, you know, that's kind of the thing. By the fact that we are created, we should give glory to God. How much more that he is active and engaged in our lives to to be a blessing to us. Um, yet yet we exchange, you know, when you were reading that verse 25, when when you read those lines, they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, then worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. I think that sums it up. I mean, it's, it, I mean, people, they, well, this is important or this is whatever, but the bottom line is, is it has value because it was created by him. Right. But then because of that, there is honor and glory to him creator. Right. Versus the right. things that he made. And so. So, so I wonder, you know, I wonder about, you know, in what ways do uh, we today even value too much the created order and not so much the the creator of that right. created order? Um, and I and I think you know, look at our look at our society today, where we can be so fascinated with with material wealth. Um, we can be so fascinated with the work of our own hands. We can be. Uh, always desiring to accumulate more stuff, more things, right. more, um, you know, uh, anything. And that could be anything. It, right, because it can even be good things. But right. it becomes, when that becomes the central focus, that's when you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And so, right, but that's that's exactly, that is the world that we live in. And, and I think we have to be careful because back in that Jeremiah, you know, kind of like you said, as I was reading that, that stuck out to you. In Jeremiah, you read, you know, um, they went far from me and went after worthless things mm -hmm. and became mm -hmm. worthless themselves. Right. So when we step back from God, when we don't enter into that invitation that God gives us, when we don't accept that, when we don't, um, when we don't look at what God is calling us to do, when we don't, when we don't live into what God is calling us to do, and we are looking at worthless things, then our purpose is is gone. It's worthless, right? Because we do have value and worth because we were created by him and because he does invite us and call us to do better, to be better, to, to share that gospel, you know, that's, I just, I think that we have to be careful when we look at what is important in our life. Right. Because when it's something that's worthless, then we become worthless. Right. That's, that's pretty... Well, and, and it's not even that God doesn't want us to have anything. You know, even that verse 7 that immediately follows, right? You know, I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruit and its good things. Right. So, you know, fruit and good things are not bad. They're good right. um, when God provides them. But if that becomes the sole focus of our lives, the, the pursuit right. of those things rather than uh, following the righteousness of God, um, then, right, right then we, we get things completely backwards. Right. Um, and so I think, you know, my understanding of most of the prophets, generally speaking, they, they are rebuking the people or reminding the people of, uh, of precisely purpose. What is the purpose of humanity? Mm -hmm. uh, just in, in general, but specifically, what was the purpose of those people who are called by God's name? You know, who, uh, what, why did God call the Hebrew people um, to be his people. Well, it wasn't just to isolate themselves. It was to be a light to the Gentiles. Again, it's all of the, um, 
you know, all of the all of the empires of the world would right. be submitted to God's authority um, and, and be blessed by God. Right. Uh, but instead, we'll always try to choose other things. And so, uh, you know, I think when Jeremiah is speaking to the people there in uh, Jerusalem at the time, I think this is where he's reminding them. It's like, you have a purpose you have failed in your purpose. Right. Um, you have an opportunity to repent. You know, here are these questions. God doesn't just uh, instantly come in and drop down and destroy. He's like, hey, he's giving everybody opportunities to repent all the time. Um, but then that question becomes, do we truly choose to repent? Do we truly choose to put our faith in Jesus, who is the one who provides that opportunity for repentance? Um, yeah. Even, you know, you, you keep complaining against me, you know, and, and even when I come and bring discipline, you reject that discipline. Um, you know, that, that line, verse 31 in the Jeremiah, you know, we are free. We will come to you no more. But, you know, if he is, if he is the creator, he is the sustainer of life. Um, he is the one who chooses to redeem through his son, Jesus. If we, if we don't, all of that like what right and our freedom is found in him mm -hmm. we think somehow that our we are free but the same thing you know we we gather we security whatever you know we want to accumulate more stuff but it's the same thing this freedom is like well we're free because because of something we've done but it's not we are free in him mm -hmm. he he gave us that and i think so many times we don't recognize that um we just forget that little <laughs> That important, uh, the important detail. aspect, right? Yeah. Detail. Right. Um, and, and all of the Psalms today even were just those, um, you know, those reminders of, uh, you know, what, what is it like to, to live a life in obedience to the Lord where he is the one who, uh, you know, the similarities between Psalm 34 and Psalm 91, mm -hmm. you know, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them, you know, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and happy are those who take refuge in him. And then Psalm 91 being that, um, that wonderful Psalm. And I know you preached a little bit about it a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. It was, it was where the devil, um, twisted the words of Psalm 91 as a temptation mm -hmm. against Jesus, but, right. but Jesus responded uh, with faithful words from Deuteronomy um, that don't put the Lord your God mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. test. Uh, trust and believe that he will do these things and care for you, but don't be um, obnoxiously taking risks for silly purposes to try to prove your faithfulness to the devil. <laughs> you, know, you, right. don't need, you don't need to prove your faithfulness to the devil. Yeah. You need to be yeah. obedient to what God's called you to do in, right. in, in response to the love that he shared with you, right? Right. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, uh, fascinated by that John passage still, the, uh, the, the, just how yeah. Jesus is able to heal with the word doesn't doesn't need to be showy or flashy about it. You know, you're not going to believe unless you see a sign. But it's just like, well, I, um, you know, how much do we sometimes ask God to prove something to us? But all we really need is to look at what He's already done. Right. You know, just yeah. I did find it interesting too, though. Um, you know, he, and this goes back to that same thing. You know, this this faithfulness, but yet. I don't know, we can kind of hold back, but um, he goes and he asks, um, oh, let's see here, I'm not in the right place, One more page. Um, he, uh, so he, uh, as he's going down, his slaves met him, they told him that his child was alive, so he asked him, when, when did he start to recover? He still validated, mm -hmm. and I don't know, I mean, maybe in doing that, it was, he is honoring God saying this was him at work or maybe it was a little bit of you know doubt when when did this happen oh it was the maybe, very maybe, hour that he said right. maybe a twinge of doubt or just looking forward to getting that confirmation I mean, I don't know yeah I don't know so I but nonetheless do Jesus did heal the son Jesus did and maybe that's why it's in there too though because it does validate that mm -hmm. it was not some fluke thing right. it was 
by the word mm -hmm. that Jesus spoke that this happened. And so it, it does validate and it does give witness that it was by his power. Right. Um, so. Wow. Yeah, I know that there are times that our lectionary texts can be um, a bit more confusing, maybe a bit more obscure. Um, I think everything here, <laughs> everything here today was pretty much cut and dry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, uh, that Romans passage, you know, in relation to the Jeremiah passage, mm -hmm. in relation to the Psalms that we read, uh, you know, seeing Jesus again demonstrating his power and authority. Uh, why? Why would we? Why would why we ever doubt? Do we why doubt? do we doubt? Why do we turn away? Why do we, why do away? we give ourselves so much credit? Mm. Um, but I, I think that we do. We are so quick to um, attribute things to human power, human right. authority, and um, when in reality, it's right. him who is in fact in control. Right, the one doing all of those things, absolutely. Well, even that Psalm 146, I know that Psalm 146 is mm -hmm. a regular Tuesday lectionary text, right. but uh, that, that whole refrain there in uh, verses 7 through 9, you know, the Lord sets the prisoner free, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord lifts up those who are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous, the Lord watches over the strangers, he upholds the orphan and the widows, uh, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. Um, it's it's this it's this constant refrain. Who is the one at work? It's the right. Lord who is at work. Um, he is the one who does these things. Don't put your trust in princes and mortals in whom there is no help. Um, but then back to that um, Psalm uh, thirty four. Right, taste and see that the Lord is good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cut and dry today, but. Um, you know, do we do we respond to God's love for us uh, with love for God, or do we respond to His love by rejecting it and turning to our own devices? Um, God does want obedience from us, but He wants He wants an obedience that's based on uh, a response to His love. It wants He wants a loving relationship. Um, he provides. He heals. He forgives. All of these things. Um, yeah, let's just let's let's uh, let's. Hmm. Let's try to live in that love more more regularly, right? Right. Yeah. You need anything else? No, I, I like you said, it's pretty cut and dry today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty uh, yeah. yeah, pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Uh, what we're looking at today. Yeah. Um, God is good. Amen. Put All your the time. trust in Him. Not Absolutely. Your princes, not the principalities of the world. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, close us. Close us in prayer. I'd be happy to. Gracious Lord, we offer our praises to you. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that um, you offer us redemption and hope. Um, not through anything that we've done, but through um, through your work, through um, your Son Jesus' sacrifice, and. I pray that we we live into that relationship with you, that we lean in and that we do take refuge and that we do trust and that we hold, um, hold those promises and those words that you offer to us close um, to our hearts, that we can come to know you more and to love you more and love you better. And may we, uh, may we not uh, fall into the trap of worshiping worthless things, but that we that we worship you and that we um, give you honor and glory and that we shine a light on you in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, uh, again, we got worship services on Sunday. Orlando Lopez of uh, Young Life is going to be preaching at both services and we will still have communion being that we are in the se uh, season of Lent. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, certainly hope that you would be able to join us uh, at worship, whether that be in person, which is uh, preferable, but certainly online if, if uh, that is what needs to be done. But um, looking forward to um, continuing to be in fellowship with one another. If you have questions, comments, concerns, do, uh, don't hesitate to call the church and we'd be happy to talk with you and pray with you. But um, 
hope you have a blessed day. Stay in your word, keep reading yourself, and trust the Holy Spirit gives you uh, the insight into living a life in greater obedience and love to him. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.